Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is Week in Review. News, games, the topic of the week, all the, the actual videos and conversations and things like that, what I played, basically all the stuff, the stuff, the stuff. Starting with the fact that, uh, I mean, this isn't news, this is just personally disturbing. I just carried a rat out of my basement today. I need more coffee in my life. Yeah, that uh, rats are big, apparently, by the way. Rats are big, and now I need to go so call someone or something, because apparently where there's one rat, there's often more. I'm a little traumatized. I think I might just burn the whole house down and call it a day. For context, uh, it was in a cage. It was in a cage. We knew we had something in our basement. We didn't know what it was. We thought it was a squirrel. I don't know why. Squirrels just seem cuter and less disturbing. Either way, that's another problem. I mean, we know how they've been getting in. We, we plugged up a hole like a week ago, but we didn't know what was in the house. If I hear loud scurrying doing this, uh, filming right now, I'm gonna jump, just for the record. But in any case, uh, that's that's a totally different thing. It's just it's just very recently on my mind. There's nothing, well, I mean, I guess there are things quite as disturbing, but there are a few things quite as disturbing in my regular week as, as carrying a scurrying rat out of the house. I don't even know what kind of show or channel this is anymore. Anyways, that's all uh, uh, just a thing. Anyways, moving on to, to news, because that was just unnecessary. News. Uh, this is going to be two pieces of news. I actually already talked about in an earlier video this week, but uh, just brief touching upon news stuff. Not really board game related, but geek related, and I'm excited, so I'm going to talk about them. We have two upcoming movies, apparently. We have Netflix announcing a Bioshock movie, which I'm prepared to have all my hopes dashed to the ground, because Bioshock is likely my favorite video game of all time. I say likely because you never really know how much nostalgia hits you in certain ways, but Bioshock was a tremendous experience. Bioshock 2 was a tremendous experience. The third one, something, shock. What was the third one called? It was like, whatever it was. The third one was also good, but I prefer the first two. I prefer the setting and the world of the first two. But I, I really love Bioshock, and they're making a movie out of it which I am prepared to be let down by because that's how life works. I have been begging for Awakened Realms to make a Bioshock board game for a while. I feel their miniatures, their style, their aesthetic, and their storytelling would really suit that kind of universe. But hey, you can't always get what you want, so that's fine. And then secondly from there, secondly, we have a fourth Star Trek movies coming on the horizon, apparently. Something I've also been wanting for a while because as much as people hated the third Star Trek movie, and when I say Star Trek movie, I'm referring specifically to the new reboots with Chris Pine and... Who's Spock again? What is Spock's, the actor's name? He was from Heroes, he was then in Star Trek, and a whole bunch of things. I'm blanking on his name, but whatever it is, uh, those those characters, and Zoe, Sal Zoe, Sal Zoe Saldana, is it Zoe or Zoe? Zoe Saldana, and I'm trying to remember the actor's name. I can't remember his name, either way. But anyways, uh, that series of movies, I, I loved the first two. I really enjoyed them personally, my wife did as well, so we've enjoyed going through those. The third one, I can't say was a good movie, but I certainly enjoyed watching it. I compared the third one more to a, a Fast and Furious movie, which I think, I think by the way, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was from the director of Fast and Furious 3. If I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken, but it felt like a Fast and Furious movie. It was fun to watch. I rewatched it even. I liked it, but it, I don't think it was a good movie. It was just a fun to watch movie. I mean, that whole scene with the spaceships going boom is in the trailer. I'm not spo spoiling anything, or at least not spoiling anything more than the trailer spoil things. But either way, uh, that was a, a movie that I enjoyed the series is what I'm trying to say. And I'm very much looking forward to a fourth one because I've always wanted a fourth one, but apparently it wasn't profitable enough to make a fourth one. And we're talking about like it made like $500 million, but it cost like $300 million and that profit ratio is just not worth it compared to other movies they've made. So they kind of pushed it off. I'm excited. That's what I'm saying. Um, I have the actor's name on the tip of my tongue. The tip of my tongue. Somewhere through the rest of this video, I'm just going to pop up. I'm going to be like, that's who it is. In the meantime, you're typing in the comments. And by the way, I love when this happens in videos. Inevitably, I'll get, like, I'll do this thing in videos where I'm trying to remember something. It might be a publisher, it might be a designer, it might be the name of a game. And then, and then often I'll get a multiple comments from people who are like, that's who it is. I'll be like, I, I probably checked it out by then. I filmed this video, like, before you're typing your comment. Although sometimes, sometimes I'm actually looking for the answer. Sometimes it's like, what's the game with 14 blue pieces, three red pieces, and you're traveling ships across the galaxy, and whenever you pass each other, you exchange a high five and two goods. I can't remember the name of that game. That, usually, I actually do appreciate the answer, but when it's more more of a temporary, uh, just a mind blip where you just temporarily forget something, that's a whole different story. 
in any case, that's that's a longer, longer tangent than usual. Moving on to games. Games, we actually have a few things here. We have Tusk, a game from Gale Force 9 about surviving the Ice Age. That's all I know. The art looks good. That's that's what I know so far. As always, I'll have links to everything in the, the bars, the description down below. We have Moon Bases and Mars, two new Maglev Metro maps. Is it just me? Because I feel like Maglev Metro has announced six maps coming this year, but they haven't actually put them out yet. They just keep announcing we have two more, and we have two more, and we have two more. And I'm like, I'll take them all. I like Maglev Metro. I really have to review that game, but I just haven't seen the maps. I find it interesting to hear like this many map announcements without actually having them show up. We have Isle of Trains from Dronda Games. This is a uh, Dronda Games put out um, Solar Sphere. I want to say Solar Sphere. Solar Sphere, I believe, from Dronda Games it was on Kickstarter this past year, and they picked up Isle of Trains, which is a game they're going to be putting out, which is outside their current IP. They've done two games within their current IP. Uh, so Solar Sphere, not Solar Sphere. Isle of Trains is illustrated by. Tristan Rawson, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's who it illustrated, but I could be wrong. But it looks fun. The art looks cool. I don't know anything about the game yet. We have Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck announcing a partnership with the BBC to put out a Sherlock line of games. Now, instinctively, by the way, I saw this and I was like, well, obviously they're going to be using their Chronicles of Crime implementation and attaching it to an IP to have that mass adoption and popularity and all those different things. But I didn't actually see it saying in any way, shape, or form that it's going to be a Chronicles of Crime implementation. So... I assume, I mean, it's, it's Sherlock, right? And it's mysteries. And Lucky Duck's, one of most, Lucky Duck's most popular line of games is that mystery genre. So I kind of assume it'll be Chronicles of Crime, which I'm honestly, I prefer it not be Chronicles of Crime. Because for me, my favorite Chronicles of Crime game has been the, uh, the kids one. Because I, well, we'll get into it another time. But short version is I like the general concept of the system. But I find that in the more adult ones where it's not meant to be as guided or whatever, I find that it's just a lot of pointing and clicking with my phone, which while it works from the app perspective, the app doesn't bother me. I just don't enjoy the process quite as much. I find it more guesswork. We'll review a Chronicles of Crime game at some point. That's not here. That's neither here nor there. Point is that I would be more interested in it if it were not a Chronicles of Crime game because I love Sherlock. I love the TV show Sherlock, although I have not watched the fourth season. I really need to do that. But in any case, is it Zach? Is it Zach? No. I'm trying to remember the actor from Star Trek. I'm sorry. The actor's name. Oh my gosh. It's on the. It's on the tip of my mind. Whatever. But back to uh, uh, Sherlock. So Sherlock is, is, a, is, a video, is a TV show that I like. And I like Lucky Duck games. So I hope it's not the Chronicles of Grimes selfishly. For a less selfish standpoint, I guess I hope it is the Chronicles of Crime system, because obviously that's worked very well, so uh, attaching that to an IP will likely bring even more people into the hobby. So either way, I am interested and intrigued with whatever they end up doing over there. Uh, but from there we have Funky, Funky, uh, Funko, Ga Funko, not Funky, Funko Games is putting out a goofy movie game. I don't know anything about the actual game yet, I don't know the details, mechanics, but they're doing one of their things where they put out an IP game. They generally have been fairly well received, speaking of bringing people into the hobby with these uh, mass market, but kind of board game adjacent games. Funko does a tremendous job in that aspect. And then lastly, in game news, we have Sobek, a reprint from Pandasaurus Games. Sobek is a game that I think has been reprinted once before. I mean, I think Sobek has had two printing cycles. Like, it was in print, then it went out of print, then it was in print again, uh, like, years later. And I think now it's being reprinted again with Pandasaurus. I don't know if they're making any changes, uh, graphical changes, gameplay mechanic changes, but they are bringing Sobek back to the table. So if you are someone, I believe it's a Bruno Cathala game, I believe... It might be a Bruno Fatuda game, or it might be neither of the Brunos. We don't talk about Bruno. Whenever I talk about the Brunos, I can't stop doing that. But that's a Sobek reprint from Pandasaurus Games, which brings us to the topic of the week. But sip of coffee first. I carried a rat out of my basement. I deserve a coffee break. I feel like sure it's a Zack. I feel certain it's a Zack. I could just look it up. That removes all the fun, by the way. In general, when you're trying to remember an actor or actress, I find it much more satisfying to just sit there and torture yourself for half an hour, and then get it, rather than just looking it up. I wonder what the psychology of that is. What's the psychology behind wanting to figure it out and remember it yourself, as opposed to just looking it up? Why? Is there some sense of satisfaction, like, oh, I remembered it, therefore I'm special? I mean, yes, I guess that is how I feel, but why? That's a little messed up. I mean, I don't even like memory games, and yet I force myself to go through this memory game whenever I'm trying to remember. I'm like, I'm watching a TV show. I'm like, I recognize that person. My wife's like pulling out a phone to IMDb, and I'm like, no, how dare you? I want to do this myself. I want to solve this problem without the benefit of technology while I get in my car, drive to work, call someone on my phone, and watch this TV show on the computer or whatever I'm watching it on. Humans are a very special creature. Or just me. Someone's a very special creature. Not that rat. Moving on to topic of the week. Topic of the week is 
reviewing games. And this is something I do, I tend to have my topic of the week around reviews whenever I have a controversial review that week. Because, I, I mean, I, it, I like talking about things, I could just ignore this stuff, but I, I like talking about it. The controversial review in question is my review of Kingdoms Forlorn, which generally is well received, I'm not worried about that. In fact, I would say, what I really appreciated, so any of you who this is relevant to, thank you. What I really appreciated is, I don't think I saw any comments that were antagonistic or direct attacks or anything like that. I saw a lot of comments that were questioning or politely probing, which I'm always fine with. I'm always fine with any form of conversation, uh, questions, any disagreement, all of that. My only complaint, not really complaint, I just block and delete, is when people are just uh, confrontational and rude. That, then I'm not having a conversation with you, that's a different problem. So to the to credit, to people's credit, whatever you want to call it, I, I don't, like, I didn't have to delete a single comment, block a single person, any of that stuff. There were lots of questions or conversations in the comments, but all of it incredibly polite, so thank you for that. The context of the Kingdom's Forlorn review is it's a review I debated whether to do or not, heavily debated. The reason I ended up doing it is because I had put 10 hours into the game. Like, I had put more than 10 hours into the game. I had read the rules, played the game, had to reset entirely and start again because we clearly were doing way too many things wrong. Uh, Crackle spent 15 hours learning the game with the developer as well, trying to get hand-in-hand -hand with the developer. Getting, he did a whole vlog about this process of learning the game, including multiple conversations with the developer. Then we sat down again to play it. Still got things wrong, and so I still felt the need to dive into it again. And so then I get again, I read the rule book and finally played it with. I want to say that the the last play had nothing wrong that stood out to me from that last play. Meaning, my the second play, which was our full dive into it uh, in terms of going into the full experience, and then whatever that had a bunch of issues that I, I went through the rule book and caught those issues, but after the playthrough. And for context, by the way, there were a lot more comments about the playthrough than the the review itself. And comments about the playthrough, I. I do not think you will see a single playthrough from any other person who has the prototype. And I think that you will not see a playthrough from anyone who has the prototype because it is a messy, messy game to run, at least right now. So, like, I mean, I, there's there's been comments, there have been comments in other people's videos uh, in terms of like, oh, thank you for such a great quality, putting your time and energy into this one. Let's see a playthrough from some. Nothing against any co a content creator. Trust me, that game is hard to uh, do a playthrough of for, for context in its current state. So I'm, I'm intrigued whether we'll see a playthrough from anyone else. I do not think we will. And it's not, it's not meant from a stance of challenging or disrespect. It's meant from a understand that this was a complicated game to dive into. There's a lot going on, and we were thrown into it with all everything going on straight in the middle. And it's just a hard game to run. But anyways, going to the review side of things... The reason I debated whether to do a review is because of what I put in the title and what I tried to heavily disclaim as much as possible while going through my review, which is the aspect and context of, I don't know if I don't like the game or if I don't like the genre, okay? And I have enough reasons to believe that I do like the genre, that I was willing to do the review, but I also don't know. So, it, first of all, as a general stance to everything else, my general stance around reviews is I only review things that I believe I am the target audience for and here's how I define that okay the way I define that is if I would debate purchasing that game that's my line if I would debate purchasing the game if I would debate putting money into the game then I am willing to review the game okay because then if I'm willing to spend the money on it I'm the target audience to a degree possibly through my own bad decisions which is a complicated aspect of it so an example would be trick-taking games okay Trick-taking games, I'm currently on a bit of a pathway towards liking them, but let's forget that for a second. For a while now, I would never purchase a trick-taking game, because it's a mechanic and a genre that I historically have not liked. So there have started to become exceptions, but I'm ignoring that for the sake of this conversation. To that end, I wouldn't review a trick-taking game. I wouldn't, like, accept a copy, I wouldn't, whatever it is, I would just say no, I wouldn't buy it, I wouldn't review it, there's no point, I'm not the target audience. Another example would be... Uh, uh, war games, okay, war games with shits across the map, I don't look at those at all to buy, or purchase, or in any way engage with, so I'm not going to review them, I'm not the target audience for them. A gr another great example would be party games, party games are a little trickier, like more, like me, I say party games, I don't mean like just one code names, any of that, I mean like mass market par party games, or mass market games in general, I very reluctantly will review those if there's a reason. Like, for a good example would be, at one point I did a roundup review of an Exploding Kittens lines of games, and I told the creator when they reached out, I said, hey, this is not my genre. I'm happy to talk about it if you wanted to, but this is not my genre. This is not something I am inclined to like. I actually liked it more than I thought I would. I didn't, like, I mean, they were all, like, threes to me, which is fine. Like, I think there's one is, like, a two. They were, they, were, they were, like, medium at best. They were better than I expected, but they were a genre that I don't love. 
And so I generally don't review games that I'm not the target audience for. For instance, if I ever do play Kingdom Death Monster, at least as of right now, if I love the game, I'll probably end up reviewing it. That's an exception, by the way. If I play the game and I love it, I will review it. My, my point is more that I don't believe it's fair to pick up something that you know you are biased against and then give your opinion on that thing. It's just, it just seems weird. If I don't like water parks, I shouldn't go to water parks and then leave, you know, uh, TripAdvisor or... What's that famous site that you ding people on? Everyone likes to review bomb people. Whatever sites there are, I'm not going to review something. I'm not going to go on Google and give a one-star review to a water park if I don't like water parks. That's just bizarre. Although, if I don't like water parks and I go to a water park and I love it, then I almost should leave a review. Like, I don't even like water parks and look how much I liked it. Does that make sense? Hopefully, it all makes sense. And so, that's the general context and framework of how I approach reviews in general. It's yet another reason why you'll see fewer negative reviews than, than not, because I am self-selecting types of things that I am more inclined to be the target audience for, which is why you'll occasionally see reviews that are in the like the twos, but most of my reviews will be threes and up because I am, I am re reviewing things that I'm the target audience for. Which brings us to Kingdom Forlorn, where Kingdom Forlorn is a game that I am still finding out if I'm the target audience for. Had I not played that game, had I not had a chance to play the prototype, I would strongly be considering backing it. Strongly. I don't know if I would or wouldn't have, but I strongly would be considering backing it. Because I do like arena combat style games. There are many games that have tactical combat and repositioning and boss battlers and things that I have enjoyed and liked. So I have enough context to believe I might be the target audience for that I'm certainly interested in them. And I still don't know if I'm the target audience for Kingdoms Full Lorne. I don't know if it's the game or the genre. I still don't know that. Meaning it's possible I'll love Kingdom Death Monster and dislike Kingdoms Forlorn. That's entirely possible. Well, I am with Kingdoms Forlorn for context, in case you didn't watch the review, because you probably didn't. My opinion of Kingdoms Forlorn is that I see a lot of aspects of it that I like, but ultimately, as a whole package, it's not a game that I enjoy playing. As a, as a whole package, it's just there are many, many sub-aspects that I liked. But right now, I would not want to dive into it again. I'm not back in the game. If they send me a prototype, if they, if they send me a review copy, final copy, like I'll, I'll dive into it again from that sense. I mean, I would because I, I get, there's enough there that I'm intrigued and this is a prototype, so who knows what changes were made. But there were just too many, too many complaints about it that made the game something that I think is not for me. Although, again, I don't know if it's the game or the genre. But... It's just an interesting conversation, I think, around when do you review when do you review something or not? Is a game right for you or not? And this is so interesting because it's also interesting to see the reactions. The reactions are always fascinating to watch because you always have different camps of people when you put out a review, positive or negative. When you put out a positive review, you have a lot of people. A lot and, and again, this always applies to like the five percent. Usually the ninety-five percent are your audience. They support you, they appreciate what you're doing. They may or may not agree with you, and that's totally fine, but they understand where you're coming from. But then there's always the five percent who are a little more all over the place. And from that stance, let's say a good example would be Wild Ascent. And I'm going to use myself as King and King of Average for this because I think it's a relevant point. I was not a fan of Kingdoms Forlorn. Didn't like it. But I love Wild Ascent. King of Average did not like Wild Ascent and loves Kingdoms Forlorn. We both put out reviews reflecting those opinions and those stances, trying to be somewhat fair to the other side of the conversation while expressing our own opinion and being as blunt with our own opinion as relevant, as as, as you can, whatever it is. And I, it's just, I, I mean, obviously it's a matter of taste to a certain, I mean, it has to be a matter of taste. But what I, I appreciate is, or I find interesting, not I appreciate, is that you find different types of comments on both those videos. You have people upset at content creators who put out negative or middling reviews. People are upset at King of Average for giving an unfair and unreasonable opinion of Wild Ascent. And you've had people upset at me for giving an unfair and unreasonable opinion of Kingdoms Forlorn. Again, politely upset, which I very much appreciate. But it's that aspect. Like I saw someone question, like, hey, if you don't like the game, why would you put out a review of it? Which I always found so baffling and it was it was polite it was like it was like if you don't like the genre you shouldn't review, if you don't like this game you shouldn't review it you should only put up positive reviews i literally got that comment on my kingdoms full on video a very polite comment i have no complaints i just find it fascinating because of the deluge of opinions you'll have of people who are like why don't we have more negative reviews in board games but as a general rule of thumb as an almost almost i want to say almost always here's how it goes okay perceptionally this is my perceptional bias perceptionally my bias is that if you put out a negative or middling review of a game that no one cares about and no one has heard of, the audience is totally fine with it, generally. If you put out a negative or middling review of a popular game, you usually get a lot of pushback 
from people on the fact that you didn't like it, you played it wrong, it's not the target audience for you, you did this wrong, you did the wrong player count, you messed up the rules, any number of different critiques as to why you should have liked that thing that you did not like, even while a large segment of people, possibly not the same people to be fair, are clamoring for more negativity in reviews because you should be honest. I got a comment on my Kingdoms of Lorne video like, kudos to Alex for being the only person who's willing to be honest. Why do you think that? I mean, I, thank you for liking my channel and saying those things about me, but whatever. But why do you think that? Why is a negative negativity inherently honest? King of Average loved Kingdoms of Lorne, and he was willing to put out a negative review of Wild the Sentence. He's clearly willing to be negative when the time presents itself. I'm clearly willing to be negative when the time presents itself. It's always that interesting conversation of different people want different things, and... Ultimately, I think every person, every content creator is just trying to do what matches their style. They're trying to do what matches the approach they've chosen to take to navigating an industry in which it's all close-knit, in which we often know and engage directly with people, which we try not to hurt others, but we try to be fair to the audience. Everyone's just trying to do the best they can. And there's so many, I mean, I've had this conversation so many times about different things. Like, how can you review a prototype? It's not a finished game. That's not fair to the creator. But I'm like, but that's, that's when people are choosing to buy it, right? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be when I give an opinion? I mean, I saw multiple people who were like, oh, this game looks like it's not a game for me, too much going on. And my opinion reinforced that perception, which I think is good. I think for a large segment of people, Kingdoms Full On will not be a game for you. Okay, I think that I think it will not be a game for you. But for another large segment of people, I think it will be a game for. Just clearly, based on the, the, the fact that if you look at the reviews out there, uh, Man vs. Meeple put out more of a preview, less of an opinion there, but in this this thing is worth watching, for sure. But Jeremy Howard's fantastic. Uh, then we had Beastie Geeks, Liege of Games, and Jeremy Howard, who loved it, okay? Loved the game. Uh, it, uh, different ranges of loving it, but definitely all liked the game. Then we had uh, myself, who did not like it at all, without the context of having played Kingdom Death Monster, so I don't I can't compare it. And we have Cracklope, uh, Jesse and Shiro, who both love Kingdom Death Monster, who were very, very, very on the fence about this one. So it's clearly not just a... Uh, you know, Kingdom Death Monster type thing or not. But, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a conversation and a topic around who should review a game, what are the rules, when is a game right for you, when should you pass over it? All those things are totally reasonable questions. Like I said, I strongly debated not putting out a review. And then there's the question in my mind of, am I doing a disservice? To whom, who am I serving here? Like, what's the best pathway forward? I don't know. I'm just figuring it out. In any case, moving from there, on to the weekend review. On to the weekend review, there is the games I'm playing. The games I'm playing, let's go ahead and find this all. This video's taking longer than I thought it would. It's already pretty late. So, starting off with where are we? Here are we. So, playing Lord of the Rings card game. I think I played, I think I already talked about this last week, but I'm going through the Lord of the Rings, the card game, the new revised edition. I didn't plan on going through it originally, but I... I well, we'll talk about it. I'll talk about it more. I will have a review of that at some point. Uh, we have Flick of Faith, been diving into that. Tamashi uh, started playing uh, Tama. It's actually, I believe it's pronounced Tama, by the way, but I think everyone's going to say Tamashi. So Tama slash Tamashi slash Outsider slash Gaijin is the game that I played. We have The Reckoner, Steel Slayer, diving into that. We have Cockroach Royal, Cockroach Poker Royal, still loving that one, still diving into that one. Got a play of Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition. This is my second play of it since getting it back. I had it a while ago, I got rid of it. I got it back, I dived into it twice now since getting it back. I'm getting rid of it again. We'll talk about it more in Games Leaving the Collection. Nothing against it, it's a good game. I enjoy my time with it. I just... I don't love my time with it. We have more plays of Inish. We have Here to Slay. Here to Slay, a fun little game. I'll probably be reviewing it in some shape or form. Speaking of, well, more mass market party games. It's from the uh, the people who did Exploding Unicorns. I think that's what it's called. It's called Unstable Unicorns. Unstable Unicorns. But my kids really liked it, so we'll be talking about it. We have Kingdoms Forlorn. Kingdoms Forlorn. Kingdoms Forlorn. We got a bunch of plays of Kingdoms Forlorn. And then I feel like I'm missing a few days here because I have like a four-day gap and I didn't not play games for four days. I still have more stuff, but I probably missed some stuff. I'll have to go back and log. But Kingdoms Full On, a whole bunch of Kingdoms Full On in there. Uh, we have Ryle's End. Gotten a few plays of Ryle's End. Ryle's End's going to be from uh, Tabula Games. It's going to be a worker placement game across three rounds. A fun game. We'll talk about it more, but I, I liked it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. There'll be a review up next week of it. Uh, Kickstarter's going up next week. We have Cartographer's Heroes. I got in a play of Cartographer's Heroes, diving into that one solo. Uh, still liking that one. Well, I still like it. I still like it. I played Cartographer's. This is my first play of Cartographer's Heroes, going to that. I uh, really enjoyed it. I can't say I liked it more than Cartographers. I liked it the same amount of Cartographers, but I want to dive into the new maps. That's the next thing I plan on diving into. Oh, I should bring that with me to Toronto. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm going to bring that to Toronto. Uh, we have Terraforming Mars. Ooh, Terraforming Mars. Got to play with Terraforming Mars. Love that one. We have, like, I'm missing like 14 games here. I'll have to go back and figure out what I missed. What did I miss here? 
There's a bunch of things that I've definitely played. I have to go look at my tables and figure it out. Now, the last thing I have here is Merlin, which is what you see on the table over here. I have to clean this up. Merlin, I'm really liking Merlin. Uh, really, I mean, this is my first time diving into it. I dived into it with expansions because apparently that's the way you want to start it off. If you look at the ratings, Merlin is like a 7.1 on Board Game Geek, but almost everyone who's played with expansions says it makes the game better. So I dove into it for the first time with expansions. I have the whole big box and everything, and I, I plan on going into it again. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a strong Stefan Feld game for me. I like it. I like Stefan Feld in general but like there's an interesting puzzle of trying to make the best out of bad situations here I, I need to play more to develop my thoughts more but i definitely like it enough to keep diving into it i'll say that much and then i'm missing like four games what did i play oh this is gonna bother me i didn't play like seven games this week. i played more than that what did i miss oh one second i have this war of mine did i say this war of mine did i skip a day Oh, I skipped a day. That's what happened. Okay. I mean, I still have more games I'm missing, but I have Here to Slay again. I have this War of Mine again. I have multiple plays of Libertalia. I skipped Saturday because what happened is on Friday, Here to Slay was the last game I played. And then on Saturday, Here to Slay was the last game I played. So I kind of just skipped it. But either way, more stuff there. Let's go into the weekend review. The videos of the week, all those things, starting off with Saturday, where I reviewed Garinto. Uh, Garinto was an interesting game because I kind of divided my rating up depending on the style of play. Uh, if you're playing it the two-player head-to-head, I give it a 4 to 5. If you're playing it the rest of the time, I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I enjoy the game. I just have a preferred play mode. It's interesting because I, I, like, I'm keeping it for right now because I like it. I don't foresee it lasting in my collection long term. I enjoy it right now. There are more aspects of, part of my complaint is the fact that some of it's a little bit messy, which is hence why it's a 3.5 in general, uh, but my favorite player mode is one that it's a four-player game of teams, and I just think that other games will be played more when I have four players sitting down to play it, so it's not that I, again, right now it's sticking around because I still like it, but I feel like it's a game that will inevitably go into a pile that goes away. It's just like, I always have that sense of, like, this is a game that's sticking around for a long time, and this is a game that's not sticking around for a long time, it's sticking around for now. Usually it's because I like the game enough that I want to keep it, but I also know my time availability and I know that I won't play it, and so eventually I'll have to face reality. That's usually what happens. And then sometimes I'm just wrong, by the way. Sometimes I, I think a game will stick around for a while and then I play it more and I'm like, nope, I was wrong. That happens too. And uh, then late on Saturday, later we have Lorenzo El Magnifico with expansion. Speaking of games that I think will stick around for a while, I believe Lorenzo El Magnifico with the Houses of Renaissance expansion will be around for a while. Uh, Lorenzo was already a game I liked and kept for a long time. Eventually I got rid of it, but then I got it back with the expansion because I heard the expansion adds to it, makes it a better experience. And the expansion moved it from a 4 to a 4.5 for me. Solid, solid game. I really like the expansion. It brings it up to the level of the Euros that, I, that it was competing with before. Previously, I would look at other games on my table, other games on my shelf, and I'd rather play those games. I'd rather play this Euro or that Euro, Coimbra, or Fuche Magnet, or whatever, or, you know, anything. I don't know, Lahav, any number of different games. Now, Lorenzo is tied with those again. It's like, oh, I want to play all these games. So, yeah, Lorenzo's a solid game. Looking forward to that. Not looking forward to that. Looking forward to keeping it and playing it again. Then on Sunday, Sunday I had a video on kingmaking, a little subject and just topical discussion around the nature of kingmaking, what is and isn't kingmaking by my own personal definitions. I like the fact that people are invested in the conversation. Whenever I put up these topical videos, it's always interesting how well they'll go over because, first of all, they don't search well. People aren't searching. People are searching for, like, review of Merlin, sure. No one's searching for kingmaking on YouTube, or at least very few people are. But it's just, it's, and therefore, as a result, they're kind of just interesting conversations that either the title and the topic pulls people in enough that they want to have a conversation, or they don't. For me, it's always a conversation I want to have, and I just like it when I find that other people also want to have it, because then I can go into the comments and be like, oh, yes, I hear your point, I hear that, no, this, we disagree there. I like the conversation around board game stuff. So sue me, I like board games and the conversations around them. Then later on Sunday, I had, a, I had an unboxing of Euthia, Torments of Resurrection. I need to bring that rulebook with me when I go to Toronto, because I need to dive into that game. The Kickstarter, the game found, the game found for the expansion and reprint is coming in April, which means I need to get moving on that one. That is a big box and a, a lot of stuff over there. <clears throat> by the way, that's another thing with Kingdoms Full On, by the way. Just random pivot. Kingdoms Full On prototypes were all late, and the Kickstarter was all late, so everyone had, like, six days to play that game. It was not not a good experience there. Like, I'm, I'm mentally prepping for Euthia with, like, as if the fact that I have a month, and I'm like, okay, good, in a month, I'm good to go. Which is not fair, but it's, it's not fair to the content creators who are getting it a week late, but it's also not fair to them for the content creators to turn it around. Complicated balances. Now, from there... 
From there, we dive into, uh, that was that was Sunday, we dive into Monday. Monday was two back and to back. Lots of games to go over. Not a lot of stuff that I'm particularly backing. Uh, Mind MGMT, I gave my pick of the week for both value pick and personal interest pick. Mind MGMT is a fantastic game. I've said that multiple times. Loving that. Then on Tuesday, we had, well, my Kingdom's Forlorn first impressions. I did make sure to call it first impressions, not a review. Uh, I mean, I got three, <laughs> it was 10 hours plus and three games into it, but still calling it a first impressions, given the context of the situation. Then later on Tuesday, I had the Reckoner Steel Slayer expansion review that is basically well the expansion for the reckoners all around solid game takes reckoners from a 4 to a 4.5 although it's interesting because this is a conversation i plan on having as well speaking of you know just topics and things there's a video i've had in my queue for a while of i go heavier i'm 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 meaner or i don't even know the thing i'm easier i go easier on lighter games that's like the topic or title and the idea being that i i give lighter games more grace as far as how how easy it is to stay in my collection. And the reason is because they're easier to dive into, the less of a mental burden. The longer a game is, the more rules overhead, the more going on. In fact, this is a regular comment I got in Kingdom's Fallen to go back to that, because I complained about the dice rolls and people and I got multiple conversations, again all polite, about like, well why, you like Zombicide and Black Plague, those all have dice rolls. And the answer is I don't mind dice rolls when they're just like all over the place and there's a light, easy to dive into game. And I think it's still strategy in a game with dice. I don't like dice rolls when there's like a ten step combat sequence with multiple checks and checks and checks, and then it comes down to dice rolls. And that's something that sticks with me way back from my Warhammer days. When I played Warhammer, like the tabletop game, I don't like complicated games that are resolved by dice. I like complicated games or simple games with dice. And that's a personal bias thing, so take that into account. But the relevance here is the Reckoners, out of four, was an easy game to keep in my collection because of how easy it was to dive into. Versus Lorenzo, out of four, there were other games I preferred. But uh, the Reckoners, either way, the expansion brings it to a 4.5. Easily, it adds the variability to experience. It adds more content to experience. It's just more to a game that I already enjoy. Then lastly, on Tuesday, we had Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, a review of that, the new version. I've already played the original, for, I had it for years, played it a whole ton, and dived into the new version. Like, um... Like Garinto, Libertalia for now stays in my collection with the possible wonder if it stays long term. I like the game, I enjoy Libertalia, and when I dive into it, I usually have fun trying to outthink the other players. But I don't know how often that gets tabled. Citadels is a great example. Citadels I have in my collection. I gave that as one of my recommendations of if you like Libertalia, you like, like Citadels, vice versa. Citadels is a great game that I have in my collection. And it gets tabled like once or twice a year. We just don't often have the dynamic that that is a game we pull out. Although we probably should pull it out more. It's a great game. But Libertalia falls into the same category. I like it. I gave it a 4 to 5. I really enjoy it. I don't want it to leave. Over time, it might leave. We'll see. We'll find out. And from there, we go to Wednesday. Wednesday was an interesting video. Wednesday was my, this is not a video video. Uh, for context there, I was originally planning on doing a uh, Should You Back It on Kingdoms Forlorn, but then I realized that my To Back or Not To Back this Monday is already going to be fairly light. There's like seven Kickstarters. It's not a ton of things. And if I do a dedicated video on the biggest thing of those seven, then there's not as much stuff in the To Back or Not To Back. So I decided not to do a dedicated video. And instead... I was going to save that for the to back or not to back, my Kingdom's full on Kickstarter coverage. And so from there, I was like, well, what do I do now? I could film something else. I, ha I always have ideas in the queue. I can move something around. And I just kind of looked around and I was a little bit in a, funk's the wrong word. I just didn't want to do, usually sitting down to a video, always fun. Sitting down to play a game, always fun. Sitting down to do anything is fun. I didn't want to do any of the things I usually sit down to do. And so I sat down to do a video where I didn't do a video. I talked about random stuff, what's going on. I didn't talk about the rat in my basement. I should have talked about the rat in my basement. I don't know. Is it Levine? No. Levy. Zach. Zachar. Zachary. Sorry. I'm looking, at, I'm looking it up. It's something Levy, isn't it? Isn't it? The actor who plays Spock is like a Z with a Levy. Okay. Actor Spock. Now I'm looking it up because now like, I'm so close. Actor Spock is... Zachary Quinto, there's no Levy. I got the Zach part, Zachary Quinto, whatever. Okay, I gave up. Okay, I lost. It's fine, I lost. Anyways, uh, go, that was the, so I did a video on Wednesday, but this is not a video. It's a bit of a ramble of just general conversations, but it was great. I, I appreciate you all being here. I just needed a day off, sort of. It wasn't even a day off. I then sat down and played a game and read another rule book, but I needed a kind of temporary just reset, and I find talking to the camera a fun cathartic experience so that was wednesday's video on thursday thursday was a uh, where are they now uh, my usual last year in review video talking about the reviews i did a year ago very short video so thursday is a very short day as far as content it's like a 12 minute video sorry about that and i mean or 
you're welcome, depending on what your preference is. But just going over last year's reviews and any changes or things, I just didn't cover a lot last year in January, so it was a very short video. And then on Friday was Ricky's top 20 games of all time. Ricky decided to do a top 20. She was going to do her top 10, but she couldn't get down to 10, so I let her do her top 20. There's still like 25 games in there, which is fine. She gets that from her dad. But uh, yeah, that was her Friday video. Which brings us to today. Today we will have a review going up for Tiny uh, Tiny Ninjas and Tiny Ninja Heroes, uh, both those together in one review, going up at 1. And then at 4, we'll have Night Cage, uh, the re review of the Night Cage from, from Smirk and Dagger Games, or Smirk and Laughter. They have two companies. I always mix up which one is with which game. Uh, next week. Next week, we'll have a review for Unsettled going up on Sunday. They're going to have the Kickstarter going up on Tuesday, so I'll have my review up on Sunday. So if you want my impressions, which are very, very positive, I love Unsettled. A lot, which I've talked about already. But if you want to see that, that'll be going up Sunday. You could just skip to the final thoughts or skip the video entirely. I love the game. There you go. Ta da! Uh, then from there, we have we have going up uh, what we backed. I will be doing a what we backed January, which I totally forgot to do. By the way, I for some and I think it's only because January again was a light month as far as Kickstarters. Kickstarters ending in January, I should say. As far as Kickstarters, Kickstarters ending in January, it was a light month. And so there were only a handful, and I just, I realized, I was like, yesterday, I was just sitting there, and I was like, I totally forgot to do a What We Backed in January, which is a video I do with my wife every month, and I just forgot to. So that'll be going up next week, hopefully. I haven't filmed it yet, but hopefully it goes up next week, as well as a bunch of other things. And finally, and lastly, the games on the table. Video's way too long. The games on the table, the games on the table are as follows. First of all, we have Merlin, which I definitely hope to dive into next week again. I want to pull out another expansion, mix it in, and get even more experience and content with it. We have Quest Quit Kids, which I'm probably I'm going to Toronto this week. So, uh, Quest Kids, I'll be going to Toronto and taking this with me to play with my nieces and nephews and, well, my children, too. I like my children. We have Museum Picture. Uh, this is from the designers of, of Encyclopedia, which, I, which is coming to Kickstarter in... Uh, I want to say March or April, but love Encyclopedia and very excited to play a game by the same designers. Museum Picture is the newer version of Museum. I haven't played the original Museum, but this one seems to be well-rated, so I'm excited to dive into it. Uh, we have Bear Raid, which I'm bringing to me to Toronto because it plays a good variety of player counts. Fantastic game. I'll be reviewing it at some point. I just I don't have enough games in my belt, so I want to play it more first. And then we have Knockdown from Awaken Realms Light. have never played this one. I plan on bringing this to Toronto because my nephew likes playing two-player games with me when I go to Toronto, and so this is the, uh, the one that I'm bringing with me this time. Last time I brought Radlands. He really liked that. But we'll dive into Knockdown. And so that is basically everything. That is your weekend review. Whole bunch of things from Zachary Quinto to Rats to Reviews and Kingdoms Forlorn and just the general rambly nature of everything. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks for making it this far. I appreciate you being here. And as always, have a good one.